Okay, they zapped my phone off 22 minutes after the hour, so this number 22 really is quite the number, isn't it? News story, Catwoman becomes head of something, a global conglomerate or a bank. Idea of a stone angel, bolts coming out of or going to the crotch. This has, so, okay, should I try to, like, interpret this, or is it, like, obvious? Um, it might not be obvious that um, people are manipulated sexually with frequency-based weapons. Um, they can do any kind of physiological manipulation of the person, including sexual manipulations. Um, There's this sort of story behind this that somehow by being sexually molested, sexually manipulated, you're going to get some kind of power from that. I think that that's kind of a pile of hooey, but I guess it would depend on how much everybody believes that to be true. Um, the problem with that is they're so worried about them, their own selves, right? The people who have been involved in this that um, their victims are endangered simply because they are victims. So if anybody wants to know how to solve this, this the way to solve this is to stop the sex abuse, period. Now, when I, okay, well, I'm gonna get to that part, I'll just say it. Okay, so lyrics, of course, Mom is going to help build a wall. And I see piles of dirt. So one of the memories that was returned to me was a molestation memory having to do with my mom. Or a woman, but I know it was my mom. And it was one of those memories that was so, like, it was so real. I knew it was my memory. And it was weird because I don't really have that memory. I have a memory of the memory now. But the memory was returned to me, like, instantly when I was just taking a shower. And... It was like once I had the memory, I could remember having the memory also. And the memory was just this shape coming to me. And I was like, there's that thing again. And I didn't, it was like the memory was so old that I didn't even know what it was. But now I knew what it was because I'm an adult. The weirdest, strangest thing. Um, but because the feeling was there's that thing again, that shape again, or whatever it is. And it was, you know, a woman's vulva. Um, that tells me it happened more than once. And I think that it happened at the behest of some sort of military situation. So I've mentioned briefly, and I get back and continue to tell the story because I want to do that. I hope I can like make a pretty good, complete story about this Bertha Thompson um, Emma Freeman and then also bring in my daughter's father's family into it it appears that my daughter's great great grandfather was essentially bred to his sister-in-law in order to produce my daughter's grandfather Archie um, so then the question is why he already had a son you know, and presumably that would be the lineage that they, that son died young, but presumably that would be the lineage that they would have gone through. And I think that the answer to that is that they wanted to be able to mold and manipulate and Archie. They didn't want to have interference from parents. And I think that they felt that the best way to do that would be to have this kind of situation where a father, um, the father has the child with the sister-in-law and neither one of them then really want the baby because both of them have their own families with another partner so what ended up happening with Archie he lived for a little while with his mom after she married this white man or was he a white man yeah she married a white man Delia was full blood native according to the censuses and married a white man right yeah and um, Archie stayed with them a little bit sometimes. It sounds like he mostly stayed with this woman up in Requa who had a bunch of um, adopted kids. Um, 
he called her his grandmother. Her name was Rosie Hapel, but I don't know if she was any actual relation or not. Um, and then her husband was Jimmy Jack Hapel, and um, one of the kids that lived with them was from the Spot family. I don't know if that is how the family, the Thompson family, became connected with the Spot family or if there's other pre-existing relationships. Um, and Robert Spot also lived nearby. So Robert Spot keeps coming in and out of this as well. He's one of the well-known Eurox from 100 years ago. At a pretty young age, it was. Yeah, the, I've heard two, the story two different ways. I've heard kindergarten and I've heard third grade. So around that time, um, Archie told me he was playing outside of his mom's house in Eureka. So this area that's now around McDonald's on um, near Highway 101 going through Eureka. And was hit by a car in the 1920s and was taken, so he broke his arm and he was then taken out of his mother's custody and put into boarding school at that point. And I don't even know if his mother really had custody of him at that point. I think he was just kind of going back and forth between his mom and his grandmother, or Rosie Hapel, who he called his grandmother. Um, so he went into boarding school, and I don't remember, I think maybe he was put into boarding school in Hoopaw, and then later he may have gone to, did he go to Carlisle? He went to another boarding school. He ended up in Sherman, down in Southern California, and learned to trade there. And then he ended up in the Navy. And then he came back. And I guess he married one woman for a short period of time and didn't have any kids before he married my daughter's grandmother, Alta Thompson. Um, and maybe another topic to talk about would be, because I've been thinking about this a lot too, um, and how this is linked in with all of this, is the way African Americans or black Americans have been treated versus the way Native Americans have been treated with regards to education and integration. There's a pretty significant difference. And I have a feeling that there's different reasons for the difference. Um, but that is a topic for another time. Um, supposedly molestation was an issue at a lot of these boarding schools and it definitely seems to be a lot, an issue for a lot of kids, Native American children who end up in foster homes. Um, and because it was part of the boarding school experience for so many kids, it ended up getting into the families sort of in a multi-generational situation. The way child molestation has showed up in my daughter's father's family, I hope my daughter was never molested, but I can't know for sure because I w couldn't be around her all the time. I really hope it never happened to her. But the way it worked, it seems to work in that family, is it get, happened to a lot of kids again and again and again. And even when they knew somebody was a, molest, a molester, kids would end up getting molested by this person. Um... There are some people who have known that their partners are molesters and have stayed with them. Have there's you know it's just I think it's been very difficult to, to because because they don't get they discover that somebody has a history of child molestation. They're not being expelled from the family. They're not being um, kept away from children. That's the pattern, and so it happens again and again and again and again and again. What I wonder is are there people actually doing this on purpose? Because I think that the molestation happened to me on purpose. I think it happened as part of this mind control program, as part of this trauma-based mind control program. Um, I don't think my mom is into kids, into little girls or anything like that. If she did it, she did it, I think, either under somebody's direction or under direct mind control, or both. I'm not saying if she did it. I, I'm pretty certain she did it. Um, I'm just trying to, you know, understand 
why is this keep going around and around and around and I think it's not just I think there's a reason for it and I mean I was clearly molested later on through frequency based mind control I just didn't know that's what it was so this is why oh go I'll we'll go into that later for so dirt I think this is a double meaning of piles of dirt right because um who knows what people have, so I think all of this stuff gets filmed too um, so they might be saying, look, she's a nasty little girl, uh, while they're doing this to me. And this is the typical thing, right? They do something to you that's, you know, it's like grabbing your arm and forcing you to hit yourself and saying, why is she hitting herself? Because we've just grabbed her arm and made her hit herself. It's not funny. This gets made fun of in media because that's the only way they seem to be able to bring it out is to treat it like it's a joke, but that's very damaging too because it's it's like it would be like joking about Auschwitz I mean it's that it might not be Auschwitz it might not be as bad as Auschwitz but it's basically coming from the same place as the stuff that happened in the concentration camps and the mentality behind it and we don't joke and laugh about that since this fashion spread is very large like and then I'm trying to write here and clearly I'm falling asleep and it's almost totally illegible but it looks to me and I think I kind of remember this there's the idea of a T I'm not sure what the next word is if it's a making something in their belts the heel of a boot and something on their belts I think it's a T on a belt and I think that the belt signifies some type of victory like a boxing belt or something. Um, heel of a boot, idea of Corona in Italy. Sign says, and I can't see it. It could be seven, it could be Soren, it could be Sarah, it could be Siren. I kind of think it might say Siren, but I'm not sure. Siren, I just felt a click. Maybe it's Siren. So siren, okay, so siren is what I hear. You know, I'm always hearing these sirens, not, not so much lately, but, you know, um, frequently sirens get set off. Sometimes they're set off const constantly as a form of, I don't know if it's like a threat or a trauma thing. Lately they haven't been doing it like they used to. Um, but siren is a woman who um it's like a mythological woman who sits at a you know like for example the Lorelei sits on a rock and sings and you know lulls the boatmen into a trance so that they crash on the rocks so sirens are considered to be dangerous beautiful dangerous women so it sounds like what's going on here is while they're secretly filming you, you unbeknownst to you, sexualized situations, purposely sexualizing situations, purposely luring you into sexual situations, um, purposely affecting your body with frequency-based wep weapons to um, create sexual feelings, then they're pointing at you and saying that you're a seductress or you're sexually promiscuous, or you're sick, you know, you're something, something bad, 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 female sex, sex, bad. Now I hear music, ah, uh, me too. Okay, so this, this is interesting because this is one of the situations where it's not an actual, it's like the song is made up in the dream. There's, um, it's not a, you know, this isn't a song from the radio or anything, it's just coming from the dream. And the lyrics are ah, uh, me too. Katy Perry asks me f for a date, kisses me. There's some other stuff before this with Katy Perry and stuff that I don't remember. There, there was other stuff going on, but towards the end, you know, she decides she likes me, wants to go out on a date, and kisses me. So I recognize that ask me for a date is an ominous, has an ominous double meaning. It's one of those things that's got the double meaning in it. Date is linked to assassination dates. Um... I think that's always in there whenever the word date is used, unfortunately, because of this obsession with assassinations. Before this, I hear, before this, I meet her mother. Her mother is a strict, tough Mexican woman. 
So the way her, this woman looks, she reminds me of this woman that my parents hired in 2005 to fix this plumbing issue that I think Mike Payne created, you know, paid someone to create. So this woman says she's going to have this plumbing fixed in two days, and it takes her two months. We're put out of our house. This is when my cat, my favorite cat, my beautiful, beautiful cat named Princess, was killed, found dead in the driveway. Um, I was separated from my daughter. My daughter was forced to stay with my parents. I ended up staying with my boyfriend at the time. I could, you know, it's, it, I could have stayed with my parents in theory, but I can't because of their abusiveness and the, you know, the triggering that it creates for me. I really cannot stay with my mom. Uh, I couldn't even, at that point, I couldn't even ride in a car with my mom. I still probably would have a difficult time, but at that point, I couldn't even sit in the car with her. I really could not stay with her. So the whole situation was a mess because my, my daughter was traumatized when she stayed with my mom, too. My mom traumatizes people. It's what she does. So anyway, Katy Perry, I'm sure I'm not bisexual. She's got this tough Mexican woman for a mom. I'm sure I'm, I'm not sure I'm bisexual. I have never been in a relationship with a woman before, and this seems a bit old to start being bisexual, right? But I figure, what the heck? Right? This, Katy Perry seems nice. And, um, <clears throat> she seems to like me, you know, in this dream. And so what the heck? I'll go out on a date with her. So other people, men, see us kissing and seem to find it very exciting for them. Before this is a part. We're locked in a room or something. Something is going on, maybe linked to dandelions, of all things. Then I get the name Helga. Helga something. There's a, probably a last name that I didn't catch. And Bjork. Then I hear, ah, me too, again. Um, and I recognize, okay, I'm awake at this point. I recognize that Katy Perry does have a song, I Kissed a Girl and I Liked It, and something about cherry chapstick making me realize the cherry stuff is linked to Betty Thompson. Then I get all these greens giving me dreams, sort of like an old dirty bastard voice. And I get the name Banducci. I hear, what the heck is going on? Then I hear beeping sounds. I'm trying to grab my keys. And I say it's an attack on the keys. So I have this arrow drawn here because that's what's going on. It's an attack on the keys. It's an attack on me trying to get out of the situation. They don't want to let me out because they want to keep abusing women and children. I mean, they abuse men too, I'm sure, but not nearly to the extent. And there's certainly most of these assassinations are women, I think. Um... I see orange cones, so this is linked to the orange cones that you see everywhere right now, which are the symbol of we're going to cash in on somebody's assassinations. Crosshatch, which is a symbol I recognize as a symbol of an implant network. Um, it's possible, so it's possible that the orange cones themselves are linked to the implants, and I think they might be because normal people, okay, a normal person who's raised in a normal household in a normal way would not be salivating over the death of abused women and children so that they could cash in. That's a very sick way to be. And some of it could be coming from conditioning. Some of it could be coming from these cars, but I mean, really? Are we to that, you know, are that are we that depraved that just a, you know, a new car is enough of a reason to celebrate death and destruction and assassinations and these implant networks or uh, they too are implanted and being controlled and being steered, their minds are being steered. And I think there's a good chance. And that's the question I have, okay? You have to ask yourself. This is, like I said before, this is not, I do not believe this is a one-on-one, -on -one, I'm turning the d dials and the knobs and controlling one person's brain. I believe this is a computerized system. So what I think is happening, what I suspect is happening, when it says Betty Thompson is controlling somebody, Betty Thompson, I don't know if Betty Thompson herself is operating these controls. I, I have a stronger suspicion that Betty Thompson is working through somebody else. And this is essentially being condoned by some element of the United States government. Um, and 
and the Department of Defense has been, um, you know, it's hard to se separate information from disinformation, but, you know, it does look like the Department of Defense, different parts of the Department of Defense have been implicated in this for many decades now. Um, I think Betty Thompson, if, to, to whatever extent Betty Thompson is involved in this, it's only because she's gotten power from being near us and from having some sort of family, you know, she has these old family ties and everything, and that she's calling the shots. I don't know that she's necessarily programming the computer. Somebody else is doing that. So I suspect that multiple people can be controlled with this way, and you know there might be just certain things that they're controlling. There might be lots of things that they're controlling. They might be just controlling people's you know bloodlust alone. They might be controlling people's sexual appetites alone. You know, it's whatever they want to control, and this is you know one computer attached to many different implants. So even back in the day, I know that this mind control stuff goes way back to the 70s, but you know the way computers were in the 70s, it wouldn't have been practical to control masses of people. But now they can do it. I'm pretty certain they can do it now. And it's only going to get worse, and it's only going to get worse, and it's only going to get worse. And far as I know, the only defense that a person has against this is a logical mind. Um, I'm not saying that that's an ironclad defense, but... Um, logical thinking <coughs> um, it's just um, for one thing when you're thinking in a logical manner I think it, your, your mind is in a different state it's in a less controllable state I think but also it's it's a systematic kind of thinking it's not sort of as random as um, emotional thought um, and I think money and cars and all of that those are emotional things that they're that they're um, address, you know, that they're um, linking in with, you know, desires. So I get the word heroin. <laughs> um, I think maybe what this is talking about is Chris being controlled to use heroin and others as well, not just Chris, but others. So all of a sudden, if you notice this so-called opioid epidemic exploded and it really, it really just happened all at once, um, shortly before the coronavirus thing happened all at once. I would say 2014 was a demarcation line in this quote-unquote opioid epidemic. And there were a couple things going on. One was this proliferation of fentanyl. A lot of it seems to be coming from China. Um, everywhere. And including in black market drugs. And um, <coughs> including like pills that people get from other countries and stuff. And then the other part of this is... Um, I really think mind control. I mean, yes, okay, there was an overprescription, there was the oxycodone situation, there were some irresponsible behaviors, but I don't think that's what caused the opioid epidemic. But there's another thing going on, which is this, this infliction of pain on people, so that people are in constant pain who shouldn't be in pain, and some of those people may be susceptible to addiction. Others, like me, simply need um, to address the pain. Um, when I have the pain, but I'm a long, I've been using opioids since 1980, since 1990, I mean, you know, as a pain management and the type of pain that I have and the way that I've used opioids, I'm not an addict, I never have been an addict, but other people have become addicts. And the problem is, once you've become an addict, um, you're, I think you're always susceptible to having that part of your brain lit up again especially when frequency-based weapons are involved. So the opioid epidemic is part of the mind control situation. If you don't like the opioid epidemic, then you should not want to um, kill me off and continue this mind control situation. Because I, I think that bringing me out of this can bring an end to this. Um, I think it takes more, it's gonna take more than that. It's gonna take some honesty about it. But um, continuing down this path, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. And yes, a lot of people are going to die. And that's what's happening already, if you haven't noticed. So then I see DERF or DERF. It's not clear whether there's one F or two Fs at the end. 
Um, under toilet, word kill. So this is the secret, you know, I don't know how secret is at this point. Look, we've got a little spotlight right on it. Um, the plot to kill us off and, you know, make it look like it was an accident or they, you know, some random, you know, like I'm saying, Department of Defense is totally capable of protecting us. There's no doubt in my mind, okay, we're talking about the United States Department of Defense. They can protect us. I've asked them to protect us. The only reason to kill us off is to continue the system. And this is a mayhem system. And embarrassment is not a good enough reason to kill someone off. But um, wanting to continue a basically a Nazi system, that's, I think, the real reason. I see the word soap, and I see a bar of soap with a butterfly on it. So soap. Um, so when I see soap, I think sun, hole, architect, P. What is that? Is that what it means? No, maybe what it, soap actually has to do with, and I've had this, soap shows up in my dreams in weird ways, like stringing bars of soap and lemons together. That came up a couple of times. It was like purple bars of soap and yellow lemons. Um, I think the soap has to do with this idea of washing someone away, washing away the stain of your sin by assassinating the person who you have abused. Uh, which is a total typical behavior for a, a, an abuser, right? You abuse, 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 and then you assassinate. Um, the idea that you're going to somehow be cleansed by that, but of course it doesn't solve anything. They just continue. It's That's a, you know, fooling yourself kind of thing. But mind control is such a huge part of this. The reason why I think the butterfly is on the soap, first of all, it's showing that this is about, um, this is about, this trauma-based mind control system and that, you know, the children that they abuse, which are called butterflies. Um, but I think it also has to do with this whole targeted individual situation that still puzzles me. Um, less, it's puzzling me less now because I see how this works. This works, this is a system of control that, you know, it's not just a mind control, it's a weird value system that's applied to people and it's a system of rewards and punishments. So, if you go along with the program that you've been, you know, indoctrinated into since you were a baby, it appears, and tortured into, you know, having these dissociative sort of states, um, if you go along with the program, you might get rewards of some sort, you know, you might get a car, you might get a place to live, you might get a gift card, you might, you know, usually these people I don't think have a lot of stuff, but they have the get by. Um, I'm talking about the people who are really trauma-based mind control subjects, the butterflies. Well, some of them might. Elon Musk, Elon Musk might be a butterfly. I think Barack Obama is a butterfly. Um, so some people make it big. There's enough have, people have to make it big to make it look like everybody can make it big, like Jay-Z and Beyonce and stuff. But... Um, <clears throat> But not that many. Most people don't. So um, the other part of this is the the implant network. So we, you know, you're subject to instant pain, trauma, and assassination whenever we decide to do that. So you do what we say, things will go good for you, probably. You do, you don't do what we say, you're gonna feel the pain. Right? We can do whatever we want. We've got the police under control. We've got the FBI under control got the politicians under control we've got everybody around you under control that's how it goes so that's the butterfly so that's why these people are up here doing these disinformation campaigns making multiple Twitter accounts and they have a lot of very similar um, similar sort of things that they do you can detect these Twitter accounts most of them don't have their own ideas or if they do have their own ideas they keep them quiet they retweet other tweets or they hashtag the hell out of everything to, you know, most of the hashtags are like, you know, I don't know, whatever the flavor of the day is. A lot of them are super pro-Trump. I don't think these people are all, you know, die-hard Trump fanatics. I think that they're rewarded for taking that position. Um, they are controlling 
they're trying they're part of a system of control of other people of note including especially celebrities or other people that um, this the higher ups in the system are worried about somehow gaining some kind of influence so they tricked me for a while because I didn't know what was going on and you know for a while they had me kind of believing their stuff that's how they were controlling me um, but you know for example Obama's are controlled by um, these people trying to say Michelle Obama is secretly a man and then everybody else is retweets it yeah Michelle Obama is secretly a, ma a man yeah, Michelle Obama is a, you know is a terrorist or whatever whatever they want to say you know whatever stupid stuff and they you know this do people actually does anybody actually you have to be pretty weird to believe all of this stuff um, you know and they all they say other things but it doesn't matter well, it, does, it does matter but I mean if you've got hundreds and thousands of people repeating the same garbage how important it is whether they actually believe it or not I'm not sure okay and then the other thing that they do is they tell you when you present, you'll present a bunch of evidence, you know, you try to make it, have it, you, most people don't, but I tried to have discussion with these people, because I want to say, are any of these people for real? Do any of these people have real opinions that they can support? Do, are any of these people, you know, for real? And so I would lay out, you know, this is why I think what you're saying is not true. One big thing that these um, people, the targeted individual, you know, sometimes they call themselves the targeted individual community. One of the things they were saying is, we're on terrorist watch lists, right? The government thinks we're terrorists and we're on a list and that's why we're being directed, uh, um, directed. well, they are being directed, but that's why we're being attacked with directed energy. Um, I'm like, where do you get this idea that we're on terrorist watch lists? I mean, that's a theory, but has anybody ever seen any evidence that that's true? No. Nobody's ever presented a shred of evidence, yet they repeat it as if this is a fact, as if, as if it is self-evident. It's a given fact. And they repeat it over and over. And but there's no substance to it whatsoever. Now, conversely, if you lay out this well-reasoned, well-researched evidence of why something that one of these guys has said is false, which I have done on numerous occasions, they will come right back and say, you've presented no evidence. Right back in your face. After you've presented all this, you know, <laughs> you do all this work and spend all this time. And they just tell you, and they all, I mean, it's not just one person. It's a whole bunch of people saying, you've presented no evidence. You've just presented evidence. They haven't, they can't address the evidence. They, they don't address it. They just say you didn't do it. So that's just, it's kind of like the argument clinic, right? Monty Python. That's, this isn't an argument. This is just contradiction. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Um, it's, you know... It's not that funny when you're actually trying to, you know, deal with something serious. Um, <clears throat> no, I just hit a blank because I said the word serious. Funny. Um, what else have they done? Um, one, so an example of, of one of those things was, you know, there was a conflation of drones and satellites. That's a typical thing that they do. Um, you can tell them why a drone is different than a satellite, and they will, you know, um, that's how Catherine Horton exposed herself as being a fraud to me, you know, beyond any possible doubt whatsoever, is that she just... It's because she operates drones, right? And she wants people to make this mistake. Um... So, <clears throat> um, these people are all over the place and nobody's doing it, you know, and then the press, when the press addresses this stuff, the press also plays into their disinformation. And so the way that the press plays into the disinformation and they go along with it as well is by saying that these people are delusional, okay, which is, disin I think the delusional disorder is a disinformation term, sort of like conspiracy theory. I mean, conspiracy theories, there are people out there with, you know, crazy... Con but most of those people are disinformation agents. Most of them don't believe this, the, the conspiracy theories they claim to believe. And if you um, try to, you know, nail them down, they're the same way. And then usually it becomes about the Second Amendment. They like to, to, to bring up the Second Amendment for some reason. Everything's about taking away their guns. Um, it's just, you know, it just becomes this, it's like arguing with a, I don't know what, they, they're not like regular, they don't, 
make normal arguments. And, and so academics, you know, remove themselves from all this. Newspapers, when they address it, use psychobabble, like delusional disorder, and they don't talk about what it really is, which is a disinformation campaign. Um, they don't even usually think that it, you know, they, well, they think, they know, they know what's going on, that's the thing. So the newspapers are also doing the disinformation by simply misdirecting. And also these guys are often, will often do the psychological, you know, they claim, oh, they said we were, I'm crazy and they're going to lock me up in a mental facility and then they'll turn around and call you and start using, you know, you're parano more paranoid or you're, they'll, they'll start accusing you of, well, not you, again, me. A lot of, most of this is focused at me. Um... The latest thing is narcissism, and the reason why, uh, it's not correct, uh, I don't know if they're really going to pursue the calling me a narcissist, because the way that they want to call me a narcissist is not the actual definition of a narcissist, a narcissist is not what, <laughs> narcissist in casual speech and narcissist in psychological terms are two different things, um, but it's because I've made so many videos, right, I'm so focused on myself because I've made so many videos, that's what I think, and um, Sorry, that's not a good enough reason to call someone a narcissist. So anyway, that's what this is about. This is about these butterflies. And they'll get washed away just like me. I mean, you know, if I get, I don't want to get washed away, okay? I'm going to fight for my, everything I can. There's no reason to do it, okay? If you have any concern about the, you know, the future of this country and the future of our children and future generations and, you know, the health of people in this country, you would be peddling against this as hard as you possibly could. But people aren't taught to do this. They're not taught to think. I don't know. They're just, they're, they're thinking about something else. And they're under mind control. So that's what's going on with that. Okay, so then. Let's see. I was looking. I was looking at the Jets song. I haven't talked about that in depth. Because the jet song kept coming back to me, and I realize it's um, a possible link also. I talked about it a little bit, but it's also a possible link to the movie Giant, and there's a character named Jet. Um, ah, Mater. Because that's the weird thing about the song Jet, this, this phrase, Ah, Mater. And there's one part where he says, Ah, Mater, much later, which I think he's saying, really, I'll mate her much later. This idea that they were going to make me wait to get together with Chris, right? They could squeeze all the, you know, exploitation out of us as they possibly could. But then, even then, they still don't want to make good on their promises. Um, but, you know, the, I looked this up because I want to make sure I was understanding this. If there was something I didn't know about this. Mater. It says mater. It's the Latin for mother, right? So it, it is related to mother, but when I hear this word pronounced, I don't know what the correct pronunciation is, but I hear it pronounced as mater, like alma mater, which is interesting because my mom's grandma is named Alma, right? Um, alma mater, mater, um, but he says mater, so ah, mater, but I'm getting, having these dreams earlier that says ah, me too, so I think this has to do with mother's maybe with mothers molesting kids and so it has to do with this is that this monarch system is that this i think is an old occult system okay these aren't just moms that are into molesting their kids these moms are doing it for a reason and it probably helps them get leverage or at least advance in the system of stair steps and um the miley cyrus i think it's called mother's daughter something the miley cyrus video that came out seems like it's also about that sense of me or someone like me being promised like in marriage to someone in the Middle East confusion over whether this marriage has already occurred sense of two women twins or confusion of real versus imposter sense of flames or something pushing up flame like so this is right before I realized that um, you know Every once in a while, it comes clear to me that they're thinking about, should we kill her? Should we kill her? That's, that's going on again. So anytime I try to get out of this and I have a chance to get out and someone tries to push me back in, this is what happens. That's what, it's so horrible for me to be in this place. And, and that, that, that's even considered as an option 
this is not a good place for me to be or anybody to be. And I don't know this stuff about the Middle East. You know, the, the whole involvement of the Middle East in this is, you know, it's not something I think about a whole lot, but there's a whole different system of values. Um, and this idea that, you know, you can buy and sell your own children. I mean, if you can tell people that the law doesn't matter and that human rights don't matter and, you know, modern sensibilities don't matter, I guess you could tell them that you buy and sell your children. You can sell a child into marriage with somebody. I don't know. But um, none of this makes sense to me. And none of this, I mean, why would this be forced on Americans? Any Americans. But my mom has some sort of link to Middle East. I do know that because she had Arabian horses. She had Saluki dogs. She had pictures of, you know, stuff like that. And, you know, she didn't have any connection that I knew of to anybody in the Middle East. And I think my daughter's father also has links in Saudi Arabia or something like that, finance links. Um, then there's that m, m line, how Saddam got his own Laden. Laden is a German word for store. Saddam got, Saddam got his own Laden. And um, somebody has pointed out Barack Obama's middle name is Hussein and said that that is direct link to Saddam Hussein. I don't know how that could be, but all of this stuff is very bizarre to me. This is, but I think this is all part of this monarch system of um, child trafficking. It really is child trafficking. Okay, so some kind of path through a garden bed, gravel path, neighbor, neighboring gar garden beds falling down. So this is me, like, <clears throat> this is an image of me falling down. I was um, next door near some garden beds reading, and what happened was I started to talk about, I mentioned, okay, this is my theory about what happened. Um, I mentioned something called the right to remain silent. Now, I looked it up. I went back and looked it up online. And um, it's pretty sketchy stuff, right? It involves, it implicates the Vatican in ch this child abuse. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I don't, you know, I don't know what to say about that. Um, I will say, though, that unfortunately, there's too much about Kathy O'Brien's testimony and Bryce Taylor's testimony for me to dismiss those books that is linked to what I've been through. The other thing I want to say is Bryce Taylor is interesting name because, okay, so her name allegedly is Sue Ford. Um, and allegedly, um, Henry Ford, the automaker, was a white supremacist. And, you know, in both cases, I think the families trafficked their children into this scene. But she, her pen name is Bryce Taylor. So Taylor means to cut, and Taylor is a really common name um, for that reason. Taylor and Schneider and things like that come up. Elizabeth Taylor. Um... But Bryce, what's Bryce? It's blood and rice together. Or maybe it's linked to Bryceland. Could it be linked to Bryceland? A tiny little town in Humboldt County where the main industry was pot growing in the 1970s? I don't know. It could. Because maybe it's Bryce Taylor if the if the marijuana industry was so important and i could see how it would be not just because of the finance but because of the location being where they put us in humboldt county and because of the location being you know the way if you look at california the pot growing areas were mostly it was a little bit del norte county but it was mostly humboldt county mendocino county trinity county Humboldt, Trinity, Mendocino, that's what, you know, a lot of times when they would say the Emerald Triangle, it was Humboldt, Trinity, and Mendocino. And then right beneath Mendocino, I believe, is Sonoma. That's where Santa Rosa is. 
That's where Mike grew up. Mike was born in Texas and grew up in Santa Rosa. So, and then, you know, that's, you're getting into the, the gold rush country, the Sierras, the um, east, and then the San Francisco Bay Area. So, um, because of me being up there and because of my daughter's father's family being up there, um, and because of the gold rush, the stuff going on with the gold rush, the types of people that the gold rush brought west, the quick riches that they, some of them got, um, the growth of the, of San Francisco and, you know, maybe then eventually links also to Los Angeles and the entertainment industry and things like that. I could see why Bryceland and these little rural areas in Humboldt County might have been important enough to refer to covertly in names like Bryce. Uh, and they also apparently had a bootlegging history up there before they had a marijuana history. So, um, so that's what I think might be going on with that. <laughs>